Welcome back to Reform the LA Way. Join us now our principal Tommy Welch of Central Region Middle School number seven and Meg Palisok, the founder of Synergy Academies, to tell us what their plans are for their new school and how they will be guiding their students and staff to achieve their success. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, uh, if you could please give us a little bit of background uh, as far as where your school is and uh, what do you think makes it special? Well, our school is located uh, almost where Central and Adams Boulevard meet. Uh, it's in the shadows of Jefferson High School where I was the former bilingual coordinator for three years, uh, surrounded by several amazing elementary schools in the neighborhood. Um, and we're built to relieve the overcrowded schools of Carver and LA Academy, which are on a year-round schedule. And now they will be on the traditional schedules as, as, well, as, as well as us. And Monica, you felt that they were special for another reason. You want to tell us why you invited them on the show today? Absolutely. I'm so proud that this is a school in District 2, and this is one campus with three schools, and we have two pilot schools and a charter, and these folks said, we're going to write the plan together. We're going to pick our partners. We're going to find what has worked for us, and we're going to be part of the solution for this neighborhood. So I think this is a great story of how not only, as Ray Cortinas used to say, we're planning for today and tomorrow, <laughs> but tell us about how you all started collaborating, why you thought it was a great idea to work together. Yeah, well, my background, a lot of people don't know, is that I'm a former LAUSD teacher, and so I started um, Synergy Academy seven years ago, um, where we now we started with an elementary school, um, we now have a middle school, and then we're opening a high school. And the intention was always to try to provide um, another way to make a difference in the community, and it was always our intentions to bring it back and collaborate with the district. Um, my heart's always been, you know, as, as an LAUSD teacher, and so. Um, What's been great is that some, some of my team members have actually worked with Tommy and Ugo, who are now going to be the principals of the two pilot schools on the site. And so we're just really excited to collaborate together. And so basically, as soon as um, PSC 2.0 came around, um, we, we started talking to friends um, in the district and, and found out that uh, some of our staff um, and, and Tommy's folks all knew each other. And we said, hey, let's, let's come back together and uh, work together and, and work on our plans. Uh, in my background, uh I spent nine years teaching in two wonderful elementary schools in that same neighborhood, uh, right off of Martin Luther King, Trinity Elementary School, and Harmony Elementary School. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned three years ago I moved to Jefferson to see the other end of the pipeline, so to speak. Um, I saw all these amazing things happening at the elementary school level with our kids leaving over 50% proficient in events. And then we go to our high schools and some of those kids are no longer with us because they went on to other you know, high schools or other areas. Um, but the proficiency rate was extremely low. I, I was surprised to see some of the same students, the same families that I worked with mm. just in fourth and fifth grade and how much had changed with the same families in ninth grade. Um, so uh, when, when I saw this opportunity um, of the public school choice uh, program, I, was, I said this, this was built for me because I see what's going on in the elementary schools. I see what's in the high schools. I'm seeing how it's not connected in the middle schools. And when they, the middle school that we was targeted, it's literally four blocks from Jefferson High School in the shadows. You can see it from our field. You can see it from my office almost. Mm -hmm. And I said, what a better, op I mean, there's no better opportunity than trying to address an issue in our neighborhood at a place that I haven't been at before. So in looking at this model and looking at everything that uh, Meg and her team has brought to the table over the last seven years and seeing those amazing things that they have done at their charter school, it made me say, if my kids are going to the charter school and they're going to the other, other middle schools, how come I can't do something similar to them? Mm -hmm. um, this amazing opportunity with the public school choice led me to form my team, mostly of elementary school teachers. We're going to bring them up and put them in sixth grade, so our sixth grade is going to look like the elementary school that they came from. Looking at the structures in our high school that are doing extremely well, our high school is divided into five SLCs. And, um, and Jefferson was public school choice 1.0. 1.0, and mm -hmm. I, I was a part of the writing team for that as well. Um, one of the themes for the two schools that we won is the arts and, uh, arts and culture, which feeds directly into Jefferson's creative arts and expression. And I have an amazing relationship with the lead administrator for that school, similar partnerships, just trying to bridge that gap and seeing how can we set similar structures in elementary school with what we want to do in the middle school that'll carry on to the high school and give those kids a reason to continue in the same arts program. The other program is very similar. Uh, 
it's the business and technology, and there is a small learning community at Jefferson that focuses on business and technology, the Academy of Business Communication, and I also have an amazing relationship with that uh, lead administrator. So you're bringing the high expectations and the, and the trusted, uh, already proven track record into an experience where you're really creating that bridge for the elementary and the uh, Jefferson uh, small learning communities. Tell me why you picked a pilot. I picked a pilot because, look at I'm, I've been a bilingual coordinator for five or six years now. So tell us what a pilot is. A, uh, uh, to me, a pilot school, uh, what a pilot school, it gives, a, it's a, it's a way to increase the competition to get the best people on those sites. So we were writing our plans, and I'm a team of teachers, and I'm a bilingual coordinator, just some little guy in the, in the food chain, right? But I have amazing ideas, and I have an amazing passion to change the system from the inside out. I brought my team members on. We wrote a plan that really, really, really kicked butt, and we beat three huge, four huge uh, charter applications. A little of me with a dollar in my pocket we beat a hundred million dollar annual budget charter programs and it was because of the opportunity that you gave us and I thank you for seeing the passion inside me and to see you know the potential that we have in, to change these things in the community and along with that passion and expertise came a willingness to really step up the game and say I'm gonna put my contract on the line I'm gonna give up these protections but I'm gonna keep the my job and invite change agents invite folks who want to say let's have a, a yearly conversation mm -hmm. about are we doing what we need to do exactly though these autonomies and the accountabilities are are a big uh in district reform that are going to let you do what a charter could do and kind and of you ah. mentioned the the annual the annual contract in in our pilot school we have an annual contract called the elect to work agreement uh, that's what we were just reviewing this morning and it puts everybody on campus the teachers to meet the expectations of our vision, but it also puts me as a lead administrator and whatever other folks we have on campus, it holds everyone accountable to the standards that we had envisioned for this pilot school. And a lot of it is, it's, we're, we're like-minded people, they're a charter program, we're a public school program, but I mean, you're gonna walk on that campus, there's not gonna be a different set of rules for us, there's not gonna be a different set of rules for the, you know, high expectations for all as far as our, our test scores and everything like that. Parents could have, Literally, they could have four students on our campus, two at her school, one at my school, and one at the other academy, and they won't see a difference as far as the programs that they're receiving. Now, Meg, you're also building that K-12 feeder pattern in the same neighborhood. And tell us about your experience at Quincy Jones. Yeah, what's been great is we've already piloted this model of working together between a charter school and a district school on the same campus. And so through PSC 1.0, Synergy Charter Academy, a K-5 through school is on the same campus with Quincy Jones Elementary School. And it's going really well. And so we're excited about having principals, office staff, teachers working together, learning from each other, um, taking best practices. And, and I know the staff's meeting at the end of this year to just reflect mm -hmm. on the year and then press on forward to make it even better next year. And so I'm excited about that. And then, you know, we're taking that now to the middle school level at Central Region Middle School number seven. And then we're doing the same thing where we're partnering with teams of LASD teachers at Central Region High School number 16 that will also open this fall. And tell us where that is. That's at um, Avalon and 53rd Street, so also in the heart of South LA. Let me ask this, because you have a, the, the rare opportunity to bring a school from the ground up and you've got this elected partnership, so obviously you weren't forced to, uh, to, to, to share a space. Um, and earlier before the break, we were talking about the, the value of parent involvement. How then, having this, this remarkable opportunity, have you factor in parents and their involvement in your success and their child's success? Fabulous. What do you do, Meg, for, yeah. how do you work in parent engagement? I think communication is key, so a couple different things. Um, in terms of our collaboration, the biggest thing is letting the community know that we are all community schools, we're all free public schools, mm -hmm. and so that there's not this um, misunderstanding of like, wait a minute, how do I get into your school or the other, that the kids are all from the community, and, and I think it starts at the leadership and at the top that they see that we're united uh, group of folks who are passionate and care about their children, um, and that we have this goal to get them into college and things like that. So I think that's key is, is leadership, and that'll trickle down to the rest of the staff. Um, but you know, regardless of whether people who are watching, whether you're sharing a campus or not, there's some key things we have learned over the years. The biggest thing is just being honest and open with your scores. When we opened our elementary school seven years ago, um, you know, we could have stopped at the end of the year and just told our, our, our families, 
we, we became the number one school in the neighborhood based on test scores after year one, right? And that sounds phenomenal. But we didn't stop there. We, we told them that number one meant we only had 28% of our kids reading at grade level. Mm. And we said that to them. We said we're number one, but we only have 28% of our kids reading at grade level, right? We, we could have not told them that piece, right? We could have just yeah. said, yay, we're number one. But we said, you know, we want to empower you with information on how can we all partner and work together because at the end of the day, it's about children and their futures and their lives, and we want to get more than 28% reading at grade level. And so it's, it's through information like that and then giving workshops on how to do uh, sound spelling cards in the open court program that you know I, I uh, was trained in through LA Unified and sharing that with the parents, et cetera. So giving them the information, empowering them with the tools, and then six years later, we have over 70% of our kids reading at grade level, over 90% of our kids at the elementary school Save out above grade level again. in math. So Save over 70% of the kids reading at grade level, over 90% at grade level in math. So wow. Now, I'm cool. curious, what was the reaction from parents when you, you took that, that wonderful news, we're number <laughs> one, but then you broke it down, you know, don't, don't throw the party yet, we still got a long way to go. What was their immediate reaction? Did they understand it? Did, did it matter to them? It did, it, it did. It, it, that I think really was um, the, the tipping point in terms of just moving forward. Um, from that point, we went from a 709 to an 811 in one year because I think all the families now understood we're on board. We had par parents come to us after that meeting and said, thank you for explaining that to us because they said, you know, at first we were wondering, you know, why are you pushing our kids so hard? You know, we should be happy that, you know, we're number one. And when we explained, you know, that's like more than seven out of 10 families have a kid not reading at grade level. They went, oh, no one, no one ever said that to us. What do you need from us now? You know, okay, we need to get them to school. We need, you know, wear school uniforms, make sure they're doing their homework. I mean, it just, it changed the whole culture. and and. It really bonded everybody as one big synergy family. And I love this underscoring the, your expectation. You expected that parents would want to do something about the fact that only 28% mm -hmm. of the kids were yeah. reading at grade level. And that's that expectation, empowering with data and information Correct. so that we can get to graduation. I, I love that story. I love yeah, that. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, well, there's a big job to do at middle school seven, <laughs> yeah. and we have to actually keep our parents involved through high school. Mm -hmm. So what will you do at the high school to keep our parents involved? Yeah, I mean, I think half the battle, again, is information. Um, and then, you know, giving them resources, tools, support, um, and the end goal. And so I know we were talking mm. um, earlier about making sure we have that culture of a college-going culture, that we let them know you are a scholar from day one. You know, I don't we don't care about what your background, history, you know, you may have been struggling before coming, you know, to the school, whether you're in elementary, middle, or high school, but we're here for you. You know, we care, we're a team, we're gonna work together. Wonderful, wonderful. And Tommy, what, what are your wishes for your campus when it opens up in uh, uh, this coming fall? For, my wishes for this campus is, is to be a place where kids want to go, because I mean, I see, mm -hmm. e even right now, in, in the elementary school level, and you know, using, I mean, using my partner here as an example, a lot of our, local elementary school kids, they don't go to our local, you know, regular LESD public schools. They look for options, and these parents bring their awesome kids to schools that have great programs. I want to be one of those programs. I want to be a model in this neighborhood. I want to be a place where kids want to be, where parents want to take their kids, and then learn those skills, all right? So when they go to Jefferson High School in the arts program, uh, our ninth graders could take an AP class in ceramics instead of, instead of developing over three years and taking it as a senior, they'll have the skills to do that in ninth grade. I want our band teacher not to teach beginning instruments. I want our band teacher to teach advanced jazz to ninth graders. Yeah. You know, I'll, same thing for our drama teacher. I want those programs to happen in ninth grade. And I think that it's possible, anything is possible. Absolutely, this is so exciting. I wanna thank you both for being with us. I wanna thank you, Jorge. I love hearing about how we are changing the results for kids by changing the way we plan our schools. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining us as we continue to reform our schools. It requires all of us to do our part. If you wanna learn more about reform efforts, taking place or to contact me, visit LAUSD.net. I'm Monica Garcia, and together we will reform education to achieve 100% graduation. Stay tuned.